Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. This week we are exploring some aspects of our worship and why we do what we do. Today we will focus on the confession, the offering, and the paschal candle. When we gather for worship on Sunday mornings, we typically begin with a welcome and announcements, and then we join in an act of confession and forgiveness. Then I leave the sanctuary, only to immediately re-enter again with the gathering hymn. What is that all about? Well, the order for confession and forgiveness is actually considered a preparatory act that we do before the worship begins. In this order, we confess our sin and receive absolution or forgiveness of those sins. When we confess our sin, or rather, in this act, we confess our sin, which is the nature we have within us to go against God, and we confess also the individual sins or wrongs that we do on, or the good that we fail to do. What comes next is one of the very special moments we share. Forgiveness is given. Jesus gave the church the power to forgive sins on behalf of God, and so the forgiveness that is proclaimed is not some general statement that God forgives our sin, but rather, in that moment, the pastor forgives your sins acting on behalf of God. While on occasion the pastor might just announce a general declaration that God forgives your sins, most weeks the pastor is actually forgiving your sins. Wow. Then you may notice the pastor leaves the sanctuary and then re-enters as the worship of God begins. That's a visible symbol of what is happening. Now the worship begins. Having been forgiven, our natural response is to offer God our praise and worship and thanksgiving. Another part of our worship that has a lot more meaning behind it than most of us typically think about is the offering. Of course, there are utility bills, building repairs, salaries, outreach ministries, program expenses, and even things like communion, bread, and wine that we have to purchase. There are any number of things that require money for the church to operate. However, sometimes when a church asks for money, it can seem so self-serving. Here's the truth. It is self-serving to you. You see, the offering is our chance to respond to God. We respond in gratitude for the blessings God has given us. We respond to the love and grace of God in our lives. In worship, the opportunity to respond is offered after we have worshiped and praised God. Together in song, we've heard God's word of salvation to us in gospel and sermon. We have confessed our faith together using a creed and then having turned to God in prayer, trusting that God will hear us. Having received all of this, we then have the opportunity to respond to all that God is and has done and continues to do for us. We have the opportunity to give of ourselves, to be part of all that God is doing among us, and to support God's work. What we really give at the offering is ourselves reflected through our gifts. When we really recognize all that God is for us, it becomes a joy to give. So the offering becomes a time when we receive that joy. Finally, after we receive the offering, we bring it forward and the pastor raises it before the altar. This is our way of saying, Lord, these gifts are dedicated to you in response to your love and grace. While the pastor raises them, he or she typically says something like, Lord, give your church wisdom to use these gifts as you would have us use them. During the Christmas and Easter seasons, you may have noticed the large Paschal candle, sometimes called the Christ candle, up front. This candle is used whenever there's a special emphasis on the presence or work of Christ among us. 
The word Paschal comes from an old Hebrew word for Passover and refers to God's saving action for us. So, one of the primary times the Christ candle is used is at Easter. It is lit on Easter and throughout the Easter season as special as a special pointer to the salvation Jesus brings. We also light it during the Christmas season as we celebrate Christ's birth among us. The candle is also prominent and upfront at baptisms to mark the presence of Christ and to highlight how God is making the person being baptized God's child. Likewise, it is lit at funerals to remind of baptism that the gift of salvation was given to this person and that Christ is with us in our grief, offering comfort, hope, and assurance. And that's why we do what we do. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.